Welcome to our tutorial about inserting new records. We're picking up where we left off in our previous tutorial. First, let's run our application to see how it works. The application loads. Now when my end user selects a user from the list box, the text boxes below are populated with data retrieved from the database. To insert a new record, we'll use a two-step process. First, when I click Create New Record, the application cleans out the values that were stored in the text boxes. Now let's make our entries Mick, last name Gray, email Mick at yahoo.com, lives in California, 25. And joined February 2nd, 2007. Now let's click Insert New Record. The program wipes the text box values and confirms that one record was inserted. We won't see the new record here in our drop down list because of the WHERE clause that I'd inserted in a previous tutorial that searches only for the first eight records. We'll have to remove that. And to repopulate the list, we need to click the Refresh button. Let's go back to our application, the code page. First, let's remove that WHERE clause. There we go. Now when the page load event occurs, the list box will be populated with all the records in our database. Let's run the application, testing it to be sure. Here we go, and here is our new record down at the bottom of the list. Mick Gray. Back to our code. I also modified the selected index changed procedure. Instead of string builder, I'm using a label and a few text boxes. Let's keep going. First, the Create New button cleans the label and the text boxes. Next, the Insert New Click Event Procedure triggers the ADO.NET code that inserts records into our database using dynamically generated insert statements. In the first line here, we declare the insert SQL variable as a string. In the next four lines, we generate insert statements. You may remember from our previous tutorials on inserting SQL statements. This is basically the format that we're looking for here. Let's return to our code. Next, we created an SQL connection and an SQL command object. Here, I declare the variable added as an integer. I use the variable to verify how many records were affected, which happens right here. If, for example, the execute non query function returns a value of zero, it means we've got an error somewhere along the line and that no record was inserted into our database. The execute non query method works in conjunction with the insert statement to update our database. Next, we display the added value in the label record inserted. We'll delete that S here. In the next line, we'll close the database connection. The following lines are purely for aesthetic purposes to clear the text boxes. We actually don't need the label user ID. You can see also in our insert statement that the user ID column is not represented as well. The reason for this is that the number in this column is generated automatically by the database itself. Another word of caution here. I'll open the table. Oops, right click. Open table definition. And you see null values are only permitted in three columns in our database. Basically, this means that if we don't insert the first name, the last name, or the email address, we'll get an error message. 
Let's insert a breakpoint on 75, and let's execute our code line by line to see how it works. First name Guy, last name Freeman, email address guy at yahoo.com. Also from California, age 45, and joined March 6, 2008. Okay, another thing here, the joined column in the database accepts only a date-time format. Let's click Insert Record, and now back to our code, let's mouse over. We see that half of our insert statement is already created. As I've mentioned previously, we can use text visualization, XML, or HTML visualization. Let's step into, and step into again. Now we see how the insert statement should look. Let's step into again. Mouse over the My Connection object. Here are the parameters, such as connection string, timeout, data source, and whether or not our connection is closed yet. That's why we don't have any data under the server version property. Let's keep stepping into. Now we're about to execute the My Connection open line. We still show that the connection is closed. Let's step into. Here the connection is open. Step into again. And again, and a third time. I've just run through the connection open and close routine so we don't get kicked out for timing out because our limit is only 30 seconds. Let's see what our SQL command object stores now. You see that the command text property holds our insert statement. That's where our data was inserted into the database. The execute non query function returns an integer of 1. This means that one record was affected. Let's finish the execution. One more thing, which I mentioned before our list box doesn't get updated when we insert a new record without refreshing it. Let's fix this. We'll remove the breakpoint and scroll all the way up. Here is the fill users list function. Let's right click and copy it. And we'll paste it inside our insert click event procedure. Right click and paste. This function will call to the subroutine that repopulates the user's list box with new data. Let's run our application to see how my update works. We'll enter some values in the text box. First name. L name for last name. And email address. F name at yahoo.com. California, 34. Joined February 2nd, 2008. Let's click Insert New Record. And we've got confirmation of the insert. Now let's also check to see if the new record has populated our list box. Yes, there he is, down at the bottom. We're able to select it from the drop down menu right away now. Let's say, for example, that the joined column accepts small date time format. Let's say I enter a string here instead of a date format. I'm not going to retype the rest of the fields. Also, the ID number isn't involved in our insertion routine. However, when I click Insert New Record, we obviously have a problem here. Conversion failed when converting the character string to small date time format. Let's stop debugging. How can we avoid an issue like this? Well, we can do it using validation controls to require that people enter data in the text box 
and in the format that we require. We've covered this in previous tutorials in this course. And this concludes our tutorial about inserting new records.